Hello and welcome to Board Game Gumbo. Today we're unboxing Shadows of Killforth from Hall or Nothing Games. This is a game for one to four players that plays in about 45 minutes per player. And it's a, an adventure game. They call it a fantasy quest game and it's card based. Let's see what's inside. So first we've got just a little promo. Here we have the rule book. Explaining all the tokens that we're about to see. This is the basic setup. So you'll set up locations and this pattern and then players will move around and interact with these different locations. Running into encounters or other things. Got all the cards that we're going to see explaining how each of them work. So this game can be played either cooperatively or competitively. And it'll play over a number of days with players taking actions in their day phase. And then during the night phase, essentially the game taking an action. So here we have player pawns. That'll stand up. You have some different tokens here, some tokens that mark your allegiance to one of the two factions. Got player tokens with the flags here. Uh, first hero token and various other tokens. All of this punches out really well. Very easily comes out and yet there's no sticking or burrs or anything like that. And uh, it's really well made too. It's very sturdy. So more of the same here. Has some gold tokens over here as well, as well as some different items in the game, potions and what have you. We've got a sheet of variant rules that you can play with. Uh, some of these, I believe, increase the difficulty if you feel the game is too easy. This is a nice little reference guide that they give you that basically just explains how to play the game without having to go into the rule book. Uh, obviously, it's not going to be as detailed as the rule book, but in terms of just taking your actions on a day-to-day -day basis, you'll mostly be using that rule reference sheet there. We got a bag of components here. There aren't a lot of different components in this game. We've got some wooden tokens here representing money. And these are just, you know, wooden yellow discs. Pretty straightforward. Uh, nothing you haven't seen before. They're good quality, though. I mean, a lot of the times you see these and they stick together or something, but none of that here. We've got some dice because, uh, you know, the different encounters resolve around dice rolls. But these are nice, you know, got a little marbling effect to them. Some extra bags here. We've got little stands for your player pieces and then a little felt bag to get added. And then here you have all the cards, which are the biggest part of the game. Obviously, a lot of the, the game is card driven. Let's take a look. Add a couple of these. So the different types of cards in the game, there are location cards. That's where the cards that are going to be making up the, the play board. And you'll be moving around between these locations. So here's a location card here. It has a, a type uh, and a name, uh, a little special ability. It also has, if you can see over here, it has a shortcut. So essentially, if you're on this location, you can go directly to this location over here. And on the back, it has essentially the same location, except if you end your turn here, you're going to lose health. And there are various mechanics in the game that will flip over these location cards. So there are a couple of these in here. There's going to be a, quite a few more of these. But then we get to some night cards. So night cards, obviously night cards come out during the night phase. There's a day phase where players take their actions and then the night phase. 
These are um, encounters, essentially, that you'll need to go through. We'll go through encounters a little bit later when we get to more of them. Uh, we've got some plot cards here. So plot cards are uh, what the ancients will play. Ancients are essentially the, the big bad guys that you're trying to defeat, whether it's competitive or cooperative, you're still trying to defeat ancients. And ancients will play plot cards during the night phase, depending on what ancient. So if you're playing with the Bishop of Pride, then he'll have uh, a certain number of plot cards. And during the night phase, he may play these plot cards to influence the game, make it harder on you. And we got more night cards there. Let's see what else we got here. If we can find the other locations, I'd like to show you the rest of those. Here we go. So here are more of the locations. You can see different types of locations. And these will make up the board. These are basically the different places you're going to and uh, to take actions or, or force encounters or things of that nature. We got some item cards here, just loot that you can acquire during the course of the game. Ally cards. Ally cards are, are the same. Essentially, you can acquire them during the course of the game. Sometimes they give you additional bonuses to your stats. Sometimes they have abilities. Sometimes they have both. Uh, let's see what else we got here. So here we have the uh, race cards. So whenever you start the game, you're going to pick a race and there's a couple different choices. Got everything from human to vampire. Back here, we got were tiger. There are a male and female side to each one, but they are the same regardless of what side they're on. So you're going to start the game by picking one of these races and each race is going to have different stats, which you can see down here. These stats are what you're going to use when you make a skill check of that particular type. So if you make a combat check, you're going to roll whatever's in the red. And again, you could have allies or items or spells or anything that can alter this number or the number of dice you have. Um, you're also going to choose, not certain where they are, but you're also going to choose a, a class at the start as well. So when you start the game, you're not just going to have your race, but you're also going to have a class. And that class is going to change your stats as well, uh, in addition to giving you some type of special ability. Let's see if we can find those real quick. Got some more locations here. I think these, nope. Here we go. So here are the class cards. And just like with the, the races here, you'll choose one of these to add. So if you're playing a human, you may decide to be a, a human samurai, right? So not only do you get this new ability from being a samurai, but you also increase your combat check and uh, I believe this is your influence check. So if you ever run into those encounters, you'll have an advantage with those. Speaking of encounters, we've got some encounter cards down here. There's a different deck for each location type. So there's a forest encounter deck and right here, a plains encounter deck. And whenever you go to a particular location and you want to have an encounter, you just draw a card and then you resolve the encounter. So there's a lot of things going on in this card. The easiest two are what you gain when you defeat it. So you're gonna gain money and you're gonna gain an ally. That's what that symbol means. 
Um, tells you how much damage it takes to defeat it. And then it gives you a couple different things here. So obviously this is its combat role and that's what you're gonna be using to try to defeat it. Uh, this um, skull symbol here tells you that this will only apply if this is an enemy. Because when you defeat an encounter, it's gonna to go to your hand. And in your hand, you're gonna be able to use it for a couple of different uh, purposes. So while this is in your hand, it doesn't actually have this green uh, symbol here. And that's all that's telling you. Then you got encounters for bad lands and so on. Here are the ancients that I mentioned earlier. And again, these are the, the big bad guys that you're trying to defeat. And you're gonna pick one of these whenever you start a game. But you can see some of the artwork on these is pretty serious. And this is, on some of these, the toned down artwork, which we'll see later, but some of the artwork on these was considered uh, too severe to be in the base game. So there's actually a little expansion pack that we'll get to later that is the original artwork, if you were. Um, the last major thing that we have in here is these different chapter cards. So the way the game works in a competitive fashion is you're going to start the game with two of these cards. So one of the cards is chapter one on the front, chapter two on the back, and another one of the cards is gonna be chapter three and chapter four. And essentially you're trying to get through these before anybody else. And that's a interesting mechanic that I, that I like in this particular game. Last thing we got here, just to show you, is something that I don't think enough deck builders uh, include with the base game, and that is simply dividers. That's all this is. You got a couple generic ones here, and then you got a couple different ones in, in different artwork for you to put into the box and keep your card separate. So that's everything you're gonna get in the base game of Shadows of Kill Forth. If you hang around, we're gonna do a couple different things that we got from the Kickstarter uh, that we can show you. Next, we have the Shadows of Kill Forth Pimp My Shadows box, which is nothing new. There's no new content in here. Um, all it is is upgraded components for the game. Um, some additional standees so that you can play with um, the ancients have their own uh, character standees instead of just using the cards and things like that. So first of all, we've got some extra dice, got white dice and black dice in here, and they have that same marbling effect that the base game dice do. Um, the black ones look, up, maybe they got a little bit more of that marbling to them, but still extra dice in a dice game is always welcome. Next, we've got a, just a larger velvet bag. So now you have one that's twice the size of the last one you got. More of the little plastic standees because we have back here, we've got more of the character pieces here. So now you have character boards for the races instead of just the classes. In the base game, you just got the classes. Now you have ones for the races. And you also have standees now for the ancients. So when they move around the board, you don't have to move a card. You can just move their little standee. We've got some additional reference guides so that each player can have one. And also they're in these nice little flip version. Make it a little more compact and easier to, to move around. And lastly, we have tarot sized location cards just to make things a little bit easier to read. There is some small text on the base games cards, but these are exactly the same as the ones you get in the base game. There's no, there's no extra ones here. So if you, uh, 
if you don't mind having the smaller cards, then you're not missing out on anything, which is, is good. You know, you don't want to have to go to five different things to get all the little extra content. And that's it. That's everything that comes in that. Now let's just go ahead and jump to the last two things we have because they're pretty small as well. First, we have the adventures expansion. And this is just going to be additional cards for the game. So um, extra spells, extra items, extra allies, just more content to get added in. So as you can see, just an extra deck of cards. But we've got extra titles that you can gain during the course of the game, extra adventures for each different type of terrain, extra spells, extra items, just more things to discover in the game. And the last thing we have is this Dark Shadows pack. So as an explanation for this pack, the original art for the game was, in some people's opinion, a little too much. It was too gory or too sexual. So they toned it down a bit, but then they offered this pack to people who wanted the original art. So I'm gonna show you a couple of, the, couple of these cards. They're definitely not safe for work. But um, just to show you what the sort of original vision for the game was. And it's not some, you know, in my opinion, it's nothing here that's obscene. It's just a little more than the art that they have in the game. So... Again, some people, you know, didn't want these things necessarily in the base game. So they just offered them as an additional expansion that you could get. And that's everything we have for Shadows of Killforth from Hall or Nothing Games. <laughs>